So this is section 6.2, which is dot product of vectors. We're going to talk about the dot product, the angle between vectors, and projecting one vector onto another, and then work. So the first thing is dot product. The dot product is basically taking the components of each vector and multiplying them together and then adding those. So you can see u1 plus v1, or u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2. Some properties of the dot product. So the order doesn't matter. u dot v is the same as v dot u. u dot u is the same as the magnitude of u squared. Um, if you take the zero vector times another vector, or dot product with another vector, it's going to be zero. And then you can see kind of the distributive property on number four. And then same thing with number five if you're multiplying by a scalar value. So here's an example. We're going to find the dot product of the vector four, three, and negative one, negative two. So this would be four times negative one plus three times negative two. So that would be negative 4 plus negative 6, so we would get negative 10. So it's important to understand that you're going to get a scalar answer, a value out, um, when you take the dot product of two vectors. So in the previous section, when we were multiplying by a scalar, you still end up with a vector as an answer, but with the dot product, you're going to end up with a scalar as an answer. So to find the angle between two vectors, we're going to use cosine of theta equals u dot v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. Um, and then to find the actual angle, we take the inverse cosine of that value. So we're going to find the angle between vector u, which is negative 2, 3, and vector v, which is negative 4, negative 1. So we're going to do cosine of theta is u dot v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. So if we take u dot v, that would be negative 2 times negative 4 plus 3 times negative 1 over, then we take the magnitude of u, so that'd be 2 squared plus 3 squared, so we get the square root of 13, times, so then the magnitude of v, 4 squared plus 1 squared, so that'd be square root of 17. So then what we want to do to find theta is we're going to take the inverse cosine of this whole thing, but we can simplify here. So this would be 8 plus negative 3, so it'd be 5 over, and then I'm just going to leave this as the square root of 13 times the square root of 17. So we type that in the calculator, um, make sure that you're in the correct mode. So I want degree mode on this one, and I would get 70.3 degrees. And we have a picture over there to kind of like look and think, does that make sense? Does that look like a 70.3 degree angle? And it does. Okay, orthogonal vectors are vectors that meet at a right angle. And if you take the dot product of two orthogonal vectors, it's going to equal zero. So you can prove that vectors are orthogonal by taking the dot product. Um, and we're going to use that in kind of our future examples here. So then... The next thing is a projection of u and v. So if u and v are non-zero vectors, the projection of u onto v is this little thing right here. Now, it's hard to kind of explain what projection is, so I feel like this visual helps explain or show what we're doing when we're taking the projection of u onto v. So it says the good way to think about a projection of u on v is as the vector is the shadow that u produces on v. So you're kind of making a right triangle. And this part right here is the projection of u onto v. 
and we can come up with the components of U um, as U1 and U2. So in our next example here, we're going to talk about how do we find the components um, as two orthogonal vectors, because you can see that these two vectors are orthogonal because they um, are right meet at a right angle with each other. Okay, so decomposing a vector onto perpendicular components. So we are finding the vector projection of u, which is 6, 2, onto v, which is 5, negative 5, and then write u as a sum of two orthogonal vectors, one of which is the projection of u onto v. So you can see the picture here. I included the picture so you can see what we're actually doing. We're trying to find u1 and u2, um, which are the components of vector u, um, they're perpendicular components of vector u. So we're kind of making that right triangle right there, and you can see u1 is a projection of u onto v. Okay, so we're going to say that u... No, sorry. Okay, we're going to say that u is u1 plus u2. Okay, and then we need to make one of our components, so we're going to make u1 the projection of u onto v, and then u2 is going to just be u minus u1. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find u1, which is going to just be, our, we're going to use that projection formula that we looked at on the previous slide. So it's going to be u dot v over the magnitude of v squared times vector v. So this would become, so if we take the parentheses, okay, if we do u dot v, we're going to get 20. If we find the vector v, magnitude of vector v squared, we're going to get 50. And we're going to multiply that by vector v, which is 5, negative 5. And then we end up getting 2, negative 2. And you can see that pink vector or the red vector in our picture over there. That makes sense. You can see how that is 2, negative 2. Okay, now we need to find u2 by taking u minus u1. So vector u was 6, 2 minus u1, which is 2, negative 2. So vector u2 would be 4, 4. And you can see that also matches with our picture. Okay, so those are the two components. Those are our two orthogonal vectors. And one of them, u1, is the projection of u onto v. Okay, so then the last thing that we're going to talk about is work. So work is if force, so F, force, is a constant force whose direction is the same direction as AB, then the work W done by F in a moving object from A to B is this formula here. The magnitude of F times the magnitude of AB. So we're going to look at that in an example here. So find the work done by a 10-pound force acting in the direction 1, 2 in a moving object, in moving an object 3 feet from 0, 0 to 3, 0. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the force. So we're going to take the 10 pounds times vector 1, 2, divided by the magnitude of vector 1, 2. So that's going to be, so if we take 10 over the magnitude of vector 1, 2, that would be 10 over the square root of 5 times vector 1, 2. So that would turn out to be 10 over the square root of 5, 20 over the square root of 5. So that's our force. So then to find work, we're going to take the force, so the dot product of the force and AB. So that's going to be 10 square root of 5. Everything here. 
20 square root of 5. And our vector AB is 3, 0. So if we take the dot product of that, we take 10 square root of 5 times 3, we get 30 square root of 5. And then if we take 20 square root of 5 times 0, we get 0. So this would just be 30 over the square root of 5, which is approximately 13.42 foot-pounds. That is our work. Okay, so that is section 6.2.